And next up is Gwyn. Okay, so Gwyn um, looks up to where the heart is, um, walks to Andira, mm -hmm. and I say, will you accompany me on this hunt? It would be my absolute honor to accompany you on this hunt. And as so, we look, oh, sorry. No, no, go for it. As we, <laughs> yep, you, you go, yep. Um, I hand you um, two like black, almost like obsidian apples. Okay. And I say, they love food. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and you're gonna, and we're gonna deliver it, okay? Just so I understand. Yes, no, tell me. We are going to give the heart one of these two apples. Or this apple, and it's a gold one. <laughs> okay, well, hold, uh, yeah, so I'm, hold, <laughs> I'm holding like one of the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think that we're gonna get it by force? Do you think that we can just run at it and, and it'll willingly give it to us? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm so on board with this and I'm, Compl we're good, and I, <laughs> we're gonna get okay. this so badly. So, yes, good. Great, great, <laughs> in fact, great. I can't wait to give this, that that thing, this apple. Okay, grab my hand. And oh. I'm gonna grab his mm -hmm. hand, and I'm gonna cast, um, where the heart ran, mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast Fog Cloud to obscure oh. the, um, the heart from everyone else. Amazing. Give me just a general intelligence check to see if you target the true heart or the false heart. Okay. Ooh. Oh, false, false heart. heart. Oh, oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, oh, true oh, heart, the false oh, heart. Oh, which, one, which one are you chasing? <laughs> That's 12. You only had to beat a 10. Oh. Oh. Okay. You see the two hearts start off in different directions, but up in the sky, you notice a Lord of the Wing turning towards the heart, breaking right. Great. You sprint off in the direction, uh, and next up is Rue. Ooh. And from there, we will cut to Anhera. So we're racing through the forest mm -hmm. into just like a misty surrounding. Yeah, so um, I think Gwendolyn would, as we're running, tell you, this is not a regular heart. This is a fey heart. Uh, in order to get a fey's attention, we must build a shrine. We must pay homage to it. That's what these apples are for. Oh, yes, that uh, absolutely makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a shrine. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's gonna an be offering. A, an offering. <laughs> yes, of course. A good one that, uh, that uh, a heart would uh, have no choice but to, to return to and, 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 and or, or visit for the first time and, and say, uh, what an offering. Perhaps there's something I can do to assist with this particular task. You see, my sister used to hide all of my toys when we were growing up, really? uh, which were mostly just different uh, shaped gems that I had. Oh. Uh, which I them throughout the caves. Just for fun? For you to find them as a game? Or is it like a mean thing? It was- Just like bully you? The or? intention was never for me to find them. It oh, was I to see. separate me from them. Great. Uh, cool. And in doing so, damaging uh -huh. my emotional state. Oh my gosh. As I formed bonds with these, uh, I call them little rock friends. <laughs> and Your friends were rocks? They, well, uh, not all of my friends. Uh, I had advisor growing up. Uh, aside from that though. Mm -hmm. uh, Advisor's of, behind a tree and you know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and he's a real cool dude. <laughs> he is, he's, he, get, he gets upset if I don't say that. Anyhow. Over my time growing up, yeah. I learned a neat trick. And I look around and I grab a forked twig and I snap it off. I was paying very close attention to that particular heart as uh, they were undressing themselves. Uh -huh. uh, called competitive spirit. <laughs> or don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to cast locate object. Ooh. I was within 30 feet. Yes. I became very familiar yes. with this object. So I would like to cast a uh, locate object on the antler itself as I saw Ooh. it disappear into the distance. Oh my goodness. Uh, just to get a sense of where it exactly this creature is and if it's coming closer to us or farther from us. That's a fantastic idea. You're really smart. And I'm going to say, here, like, as you say that, kind of touches the back of their neck a little bit. And that's all you would notice in this particular surrounding. Oh. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Do people not tell you that you're smart? Uh, they don't have to. <laughs> they, right, because you're surrounded to. by people who always agree with you. I get it. Oh, I... 
Oh, no. Is that wrong? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, don't uh, don't apologize to me. Okay. Never apologize to me. Oh, don't, yes. <laughs> you know, no. Between us, between uh, friends, yes. uh, there's no such need for such words. No, 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 no. It, it, I simply don't see many folks, I don't, aside from diplomatic meetings and, and occasional lessons and, and, you know, my rock buds. Yeah. Uh, uh, Are they here now? N- no. I was uh, just asking. I just want to understand. No, 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 no. They, Stayed at home. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyhow, uh, <laughs> I, I have to quickly uh, I have to say a thing to do the spell, so I'll stop yeah. <laughs> talking the way I am right now. That's great. And I'll, I'll do the, the spell uh, uh, currently, and I cast it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, you feel in this fog a little cold breeze dark wind that originates from your hand shoots off in the direction deeper into the fog but it seems to cut a path through it that only you can see you know that about 80 feet in front of you uh, now that you've turned and are facing like due west towards the setting sun the heart is incredibly close And upon your first instinctual step forward, you see something white flash through the fog in that direction, too. Well, close enough to uh, be allured by whatever we decide to build (laughs) in honor of (laughs) said heart. And Gwendolyn is just grabbing a bunch of sticks. Uh, Should I help? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yes, if you want. Uh, Wait. Mm -hmm. So you guys are building like a little stick shrine? Yeah, they're building like a, a shrine that is sort of like gonna be like open with like the, the three apples as an offering. Cause they said they've never been bested. So why would we try to best them? Why would we try? It would be foolish. <laughs> do you, this is, this might be odd to ask. Sure, ask anything. Uh, do you know the story of the Blair Witch Project? <laughs> um, <laughs> can you explain it to me? It's a... Can Squawk hear this and turn around a bit? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What? Yeah, absolutely. Are we talking Blair Witch Project? <laughs> I have thoughts. And as you begin to talk, it was 11 a.m. for all intents and purposes when the hunt began. But time is different here. And it suits the purposes of the hunt as the fog thickens and the gloom behind it deepens. And the forest you're all standing in, some waiting, some building, some soaring, changes and goes over tonight. Anyone have a letter they want to send? I have two. Okay. So I'll do the first of two, if that's all right. Sure. I don't know why I'm flipping open. I haven't written anything. (laughs) I don't know at which point in the timeline you would receive this, but a letter comes to Gwendolyn Thistlehop. My dearest Gwendolyn, not, actually not my dearest, and this is all in it. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> not my dearest, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to address uh, per se in that regard. Your dearest Gwendolyn, uh, I just wanted to say what an absolute pleasure it was to join you in the hunt yesterday. It truly meant quite a bit, and I wanted to uh, deliver something to you uh, to uh, embolden, and then embolden's crossed out, uh, uh, represent my feelings in a way. It's true what I said yesterday, that I had rock friends (laughs) growing up, (laughs) Uh, but I am not a child anymore, (laughs) and I should be making real friends, which I have. So I... (laughs) <laughs> Solid. <laughs> His letters are bumbling. <laughs> Come to the beach <laughs> in the early hours. On sea for miles. And came upon uh, shells, uh, two matching uh, some unfortunately demised creature. And I wanted you to have one of them, and I would have the other. Uh, apart, they function obviously uh, as a shell would, <laughs> but at the same time together, it, it does make quite a pair. And so, uh, please have this, uh, my shell pal. And this is written in like liquid granite, 
Ooh. <laughs> and I want to say, it might be hard to tell particularly, but if you kept a close eye, I think you would notice the second paragraph of it is in fresher ink. And there's been a time period between the two. And the fresher one says, and the handwriting's a little bit different, a little less regal and a little more candid. But also I, I, I do want to reiterate that it, it does actually mean a lot to me. And I do consider us friends now. And if there's anything you ever want to talk about, and I don't mean this diplomatically, like legitimately if there's just something on your mind, uh, let me know. And I'd be happy to join you in a stroll and a chat. Enjoy the show. When I get this letter, I'm in my quarters, so I'm by myself. I, I read all of it. I look at the shell, and across my face, there's breaks in the Gwyn glamour. I, I start to flicker, and you see the, the dark hair, the, like the gold branch marks, like the, the dark makeup. She smiles, and then it flips back. Can I add that <laughs> there is to be any witness to that? Mm -mm. I didn't send advisor. Okay. Uh, Instead, I sent my dog. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yuck. Grandpa dog. Oh. Grandpa dog. Grandpa dog. Oh. Oh. Grandpa dog. Would you have allowed grandpa dog into your quarters? Um, my room's pretty private, but I, yeah. I will say that um, because my room is so private, I read it outside. And so what grandpa dog saw was a flicker. Grandpa dog. Just straight face, Grandpa yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> grandpa dog uh, clocks it and it turns his head. And then, without waiting for a response, mm -hmm. turns and trots back cool. to his master. When? Yes. Do you go to the duel? I do. Um, in hearing about the duel, I'm in my quarters. The bird flies away, and I'm by myself in my room. Mm -hmm. I am constructing a large umbrella. Um, I'm fully in my comfortable self. So um, my moth wings are kind of rustling against like um, my very crowded room because my room has lots of things in it. And I'm looking for sticks and um, big leaves and just whatever I had like kind of gathered mm. um, to make a large umbrella. I take the shell that you gave me and I kind of like jam it into um, almost like a, a large like needle with thread and I sort of twine it into a bracelet. And then I'm just making sure I have everything. Okay. Okay. Can I make you a cup of tea? I would love that. Okay. Oh. Everyone here is very scary, but not you. And here it just suddenly appears like behind you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so you die, right? What? <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> oh, she's not a ghost. No, I suppose not yet. My apologies. When you do die, though, I would love to know what it's like. Sorry. Do you is... not ever die? No. Well, yes, yeah, sort of. It's a, it's, th there's a lot of environmental things that have to happen. Okay. I want to inside check Gwen really quickly. Mm -hmm. You have to roll with disadvantage as the moment you kind of like start to stare... Gwendolyn down, Vanessa interposes herself. Oh, wow. That is going to be a total of six. Uh, against your deception. That is a 12. What were you looking for? Uh, well, I was just, I wanted to see if I could notice that Gwendolyn was upset. Mm. How quickly do you like regain your composure? As soon as he pops up, yeah, they just, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, can I help you with something? I have such a bad read on everybody, so I'm not going <laughs> to ask the question that's on the tip of my tongue. I'm not going to. No, thank you no, so much for the show. Hold on. Yeah. And she raises her hand <gasps> to quiet you. <gasps> ask your question. I'm getting the reading already. It's already answered for me. <laughs> the thing I was going to say, I would look ridiculous if I were to ask the question. Uh, and the moment's passed. It, it wasn't even a moment to begin with. So, you know, don't worry. Tea. Are we, are we getting tea? Are we... Yes! I am taking in everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. And I turn to you two, recognizing Rue and not recognizing Binks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the counterspell that all happened in front of us. Yes. 
and putting it together, I I look in your direction. Uh-huh. Uh, do we make eye contact? Uh, yeah, sure. Just for flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm playing a paladin. Yeah. I can't be charmed. I can't be thrown into falling in love because of magic. Correct. And I can't be put to sleep. That last one, not important. I don't know why I brought it up. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, just because of the nature of that magic, mm -hmm. I recognize your eyes even with the charm turned. Because mm -hmm. I think it is... Gwendolyn and Binks have the same eyes. <gasps> like, that's what I made true. So you would, for sure. Yeah. So we make eye contact, uh -huh. and I recognize you, and I think about the magic that you just pulled. And I straighten my posture, mm -hmm. and I give you a nod. And a smile. Oh. And I turn, and I princely take my 30 feet to move. And I see the necklace 70 feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And I cast darkness, pointing uh, at a spot 60 feet away. Okay. And if you're counting at home, you're like, oh, wait a second, that's yep. not enough. It is a 15 foot spell <gasps> to engulf the necklace. And then with the free action of speaking, I would just like to turn to the nearest part of the hedge that is close to me and whisper, Again, I trust your judgment. I don't see why this has to be fought over. Again, it, it goes to the person who deserves it the most. Please uh, proceed, I suppose. Amazing. And I whisper that in that voice and then turn and go, oh, a, a darkness. <laughs> I've cast it. <laughs> and I d look at that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Everyone, How did we all, did we all do, hello? <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Last but not least, in Hera, you walk into the darkness, your element. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's home. <laughs> That's a crit. Shit. Shut up. That's crit. That is a crit. That's, that is a right. crit. That is a nat 20. Amazing. Um, <laughs> holy <laughs> shit. I love when it's dice incredible. tell a story. <gasps> but Thank technically, you. Te a 21, because I have a plus one. Okay, calm down. It's a natural 20. <laughs> you did it. <gasps> oh shit, oh shit. Um, you just said in my element, yeah. I can't see in darkness. Correct. Because it's darkness. Correct. You cast it. But I can hear, and I'm used to listening in darkness. Mm -hmm. I would like to say then, yeah. if it's all right with you. Please. I listen for the breeze that the hedge is blowing for a very particular sound that I'm actually well aware of. Granted, it's a bit bigger in this instance, but it's a sound I do know, and I would like to very sneakily uh, push the heart into the hands of one Binks. Oh, what? Oh, amazing. Okay. You feel in the dark as you're like scrabbling yeah. through the grass and uh, <laughs> Regency question. Gloves or no gloves? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. The most important thing. Yeah, do our hands touch? Yeah, like, oh. I think I understand what's happening here. Please let them touch. <laughs> <laughs> I will, okay, if I may then. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, Ungloved Ooh. hands with an accent mark on the E there. Yes, thank you. Uh, hands touch, not sure whose. I don't make any sound myself. Yeah. yeah. It's the best of my ability. And no one can see in the darkness but were the audience to be privy to this 100%, that Darcy-esque, like, shaking, <sighs> tense. <sighs> Amazing. And you feel mm -hmm. grass and then the warmth of a hand and then something sharp and cold pressed into it. Binks, you are holding the crystal heart. <sighs> You're in the dark. Mm -hmm. Before you dispel the darkness, I want to give you a chance to know. Because you are a thing of lost objects and liminal spaces, and this is that. So please make a perception check or insight with advantage. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Um, that is a, you said perception or? Or insight. Okay. That is a 19. Make a deception check. Oh, oh. wow. 
That's only 15. Wow. Ooh. He's <laughs> I'm the studio what? audience. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> Tara flowers. <laughs> he smells like an oncoming storm mm -hmm. and dark water and eroded stone. You know exactly who pressed this into oh, your no. hand. The hedge of its own volition intercedes and drops your darkness spell. And you hear a great uh, set of sh uh, shouts and cries and swears of losing money. And, not for uh, me. Not from you. Uh, sorry, I just meant that you're the ringleader of it. Yeah. Uh, and acclaim and curiosity as the entire hedge falls out and away and standing at the center with the crystal heart in her hand Yay. Yay. <laughs> is Binks Chopley. My last name is terrible. <laughs> the last Beautiful. member of the court of craft. I have two letters. Yes. Um, one is very short and is not warranting a response. Okay. Oh. oh. It's uh, right after the hedge maze. Gwendolyn, or Binks, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Binks is um, in her little like hovel, essentially, and um, she's pacing. She's like, ah, I said it. I said the thing, right? Wait, question. Yes. Where is Binks staying? You know, like the where all of the Fey are staying, like the the main like boarding place, right? Yeah. Is there a place? Like uh, that? The main palace is where like most of the Arch Fey are staying, unless mm -hmm. they brought their own accommodations, like the Goblin Pagoda or the Nest. Binks, given liminal spaces and all of that, um, she's in the the castle, but she um, has sort of like created like um like a void space for herself that is like under like a radiator. Mm, so okay. like, it's like a, a place that nobody thinks about or notices. And in that liminal space, she just has all of her shit. Like she it. has her like curios, like it looks like an antique store in her house. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That was great. Continue. Yes. So uh, she's, she's pacing and um, she, goes through like this large barrel. She has various fruits and um, vegetables and she finds another black apple. And it is like this deep inky, inky onyx color. She looks at it and it is like, like, like the finest fruit she owns. Um, and on the stem of the apple, she scrawls, thank you for seeing me. Um, puts it, um, ties it with that. And in the dead of night, like it is like nighttime uh, because when does it, or Binks doesn't have any attendants. Yeah. So Binks creeps to where you are. Mm -hmm. So creeps to, where is Antara staying? I think in uh, just a different wing. Yeah. Yeah. So sneaks through the hallways of this wing, clutching this apple. I'm gonna need a stealth check. Uh-huh. Because my man-faced dog sleeps outside my door. Yeah. 12. Oh, Grandpa's here. Oh, <laughs> oh Grandpa dog. Yeah. Grandpa dog. Oh, oh, Grandpa dog. Okay. A 12. Mm hmm You make your way. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> it's not great. Not great for me. Um, yeah, so I creep to where I believe you are. Mm -hmm. I set it down. Grandpa dog for sure comes up. Oh, yeah. What does he do when he sees? I like. I don't know how much you and Grandpa Dog talk. I speak around Grandpa Dog quite often. Uh, not necessarily to Grandpa Dog a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I believe the only word that Grandpa Dog has uttered thus far is the word shit. <laughs> <laughs> sounds right. And very quietly. Yeah. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that, Grandpa Dog. <laughs> <laughs> well then, as you approach, Grandpa Dog is going to sort of uh, raise up out of the darkness and you see just tiny red points, like light reflecting yeah. off of the back of his eyes, but there is no light in this room as he like stalks towards you, growling and baring his teeth. Uh, the things I know about dogs are from the 
mortal realm and I'm going to, I'm going to submit. So I'm gonna like go, I'm gonna crouch down, reach in my bag, throw some food and then flop to my stomach. <laughs> oh. Because that's how, do I have, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me an animal handling check. <laughs> I'll let you know you have to be an 11. 11. Ooh, uh, 11 exactly. Meets it, beats it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So uh, he's stalking towards you. I have jerky. And you throw the jerky and he ignores it. Oh. Because he's got old man teeth oh, and he yeah. needs soft food. <laughs> pudding. Uh -huh. Do I have pudding? <laughs> pudding. Pudding. <laughs> pudding. <laughs> Not chocolate. <laughs> the moment you flop onto your back, uh -huh. he grows silent and kind of pads over to you and then just sort of lays down next to you. And Russ is chill on the ground just looking at you. Hey buddy. You 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 you're a good you're a good boy. Mm -hmm. You're you're a good boy. I'm gonna try to like wiggle. Like I'm on my back still, but I'm trying to wiggle closer to the door. Yeah, he's uh -huh. gonna allow it. Okay. Oh, you're so cute. You're just the, you're, I, uh, I. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's not good when he no. chooses to do it. <laughs> um, sets down the apple. It's like, it, that's a present. It's a present. Cool? You cool? <sighs> he just gives a little snort. I'm just gonna like, because I don't know. I don't yeah. know if it's gonna come for me. Yeah. Uh, if you are careful, he will allow you to leave without uh, really remarking. Kind of looks over at the apple, looks down at the jerky next to him, and then just returns his chin to his hands and continues his watch. Good. Things great. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Amazing. Anyone else got anything they I've want to put? I've got two little quick ones. Yeah, let's right, go. Just quick little ones. Um, uh, timing is a little wibbly wobbly, I understand. Uh, but if I may. Of course. Um, Binks slinking around. Um, so secret. So secret um, and severely unwarranted because at that exact same time, and Hera is sneaking over to see your corner. Yay! Uh, and places down a letter to be read at any time uh -huh. at your earliest convenience, which says something to the effect of, uh, I really should write these like all of you do. Uh, <laughs> Dear Binks, how appropriate it is that we are on this island during this uh, particular event. For uh, seasides, for me, have the most incredible small magic I experience on a regular basis. That is of tide pools. They are there Always, but it's only until the tide has receded that you truly see the wonder that has been there the entire time. If you would like to speak at any point about anything, please know you have a friend and the time and place are completely up to your choosing. Just mm. let me know. Signed, Prince Adira. Ooh. And the I quietly sneak back to my quarters. I see the apple. I haven't quite made the thing because I'm a little sweaty. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, what, what did you bring here? <laughs> Dog, what did you do? <laughs> I just quickly scoop it up. No, don't come in. <laughs> You're not allowed in when I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I put my like cavalry officer's uh, uh, hat in my hand and stand in. Miss Thistlehop, I believe that uh, Miss Chopley delivered a letter on your behalf. She did, because there is something that I must tell you that must remain... Hello. Hi. Uh, yes. Okay. Out, um, side of the bloom. Do you ask because you mean to... I do not believe that you are of that court. Not who you truly are. You would be absolutely correct. And I, like, um, change into, because uh, while you were pontificating, I was already starting to kind of shimmer a little bit. Um, you're right. Hi. Uh, yeah. Binks is Gwyn, and Gwyn is Binks. No. <laughs> you knew? Of course I knew. Yeah, yeah, I figured out yesterday. Well, shit. I pull something off, and I just look at you and say, is there anything that you'd like to say to uh, Miss Chopley? You make an excellent frog. I turn to talk to Rue. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell you this. Oh, I'm 
climb off of you. Climb onto. Do you want to Omar? go um, see the outside? I, I would love to see the outside. Great, we'll be <laughs> right back. Yeah, I'll give you privacy. Yeah. Uh, I look out. Oh uh, yeah, so when I was <laughs> in the mortal realm, we would just hide a lot of socks. Oh, that's so. That's where they go. <laughs> that's where they go. Have you been to the Bordel Rub? It's great. I have read about it in books. Do you read a lot of books? I hate to brag, <laughs> but you're gonna because that's what the next sentence is, right? <laughs> I've read like so many and, fucking um, books. It's like fucking well, ridiculous. Amazing. Can I make an insight check on the on these two? I Please like do. There's a uh, connection. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Unclear. Uh, twelve. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you guys roll against it. Uh, this is a like nice moment, but I do think uh, it's worth saying you just you had a whole big thing and suddenly like turning your focus uh, outward is not as effective. Mm. Also, polymorph only lasts an hour and you've oh, got shit. to hustle. I'm afraid to interrupt this. Uh, <laughs> I, I We have to go. Okay, well, we'll continue this later. I have so much to tell you, probably better that I'm different. <laughs> As 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 you um yeah as obviously hi I visit uh uh the living quarters of Binks. So I think before you come over, Binks is definitely trying to tidy as much as they can. So they're kind of flitting around. They're shoving a bunch of like they have a um. Like a clown doll, and they're putting it in their 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 wings. They take a, a deflated basketball, and they're putting it in their wings, and they're trying to like only keep out the fancy stuff. <laughs> so it's just like a bunch of like um, silverware and plates, just like as decoration, and um, various like feather boas everywhere. Uh, and yeah. knock on your door. Uh, Coming! And I am wearing, like, everything has been really, like, formal, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just wearing, like, the Fey equivalent of, like, leggings and a dirty t-shirt. So whatever the Fey equivalent is of that. Hey! Uh, uh, hello, is, is this an, okay, uh, and I glance out to the hallway. Uh, good, good day, Binks. Uh, do you mind if I step in very quickly? Oh, of, of course. Uh, yeah, come in. Great, not a vampire. And I close the door. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I had an interesting request, if that's all right. Um, okay. I wanted to put together an outfit for later today for the ball. Oh. Um, and, uh... I have some that are pre-selected, but I thought in order to make somewhat of an appearance, um, I was wondering if maybe I could bother your talents a little bit. I would be so happy to craft you a a suit or anything you want. What What are you thinking? Um, what statement do you want to make? Um, Prince of Darkness. Darkness. Yeah. This is great, great, great. Yeah. Um, and Binks is um, pulling um, through her drawers and is taking out various fabrics. Continue, describe. Oh, um, uh, something, um, if you stared at it for a long time, it would look like um, obsidian stalagmites, like collected together. That's sort of the pattern of it. But, but, but uh, you don't want to look to for too long. Uh, hypnotizing stalagmites, great, great, great. Okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, I um, flip um, a, a mannequin that had been tipped over. I flip it and it, goes upright and I start like um, sewing. Yes. Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. No, 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 continue. Uh, so oh, I have, yeah. um, I'm throwing <laughs> rocks on it and I'm like bead working <laughs> rocks. Uh -huh. Oh, great. Um, form fitting? Form fitting, okay. Um, uh, uh, arms out? Uh, 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 like as if uh, I'm- Out right now? Uh, oh, oh, yes, okay. oh yeah. Measuring <laughs> mm -hmm. you? Great, uh, okay. yes, oh, right, thank great. you, okay, yeah. Uh huh. Um, and uh, you know what, fuck it. Maybe like a little like gemstone, Rock crown. Gemstone rock crown. Of sort. Like a cave crown, whatever that cave would be. Crown. Yeah. Or I, like a cave tiara. Maybe not a full crown. That's the whole thing. Just no, like no, a, no. a headpiece. You, you hey, you mm. can get a full crown. You don't have to get a half crown or a tiara. You can get a full crown. Great. In that case, a full crown, please. <laughs> right. From like the back. It's like the my living quarters sort of expand as I'm moving through them. So if we're close, it seems really small, but I can like move further out and it gets a little larger. Um, I now have a welding mass and some <laughs> flame and I am welding you your crown currently. This might take a little bit. Thank you for trusting me with this. This is great. I actually haven't made anything for anyone else in a, in a really long time. So this is, this is like, 
one of the best days I've had in probably a while. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so glad I'm able to change that pattern, I suppose. <laughs> well, you know, it's fine. You get used to being alone. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you make friends like, and then, you know, they only have short lifespans, mm. all of them. And so then you just get new friends for a little bit. Most of my friends were rocks growing up. <laughs> as <in> my <laughs> right you did say that um <laughs> and my dog <laughs> so you're used to being kind of alone then yes actually yes absolutely so something we have in common i suppose yeah, yeah. do you um what but you come from a court though i i guess I, I don't really understand why you were alone when you had a court of people who would um you know support you and be around you and what, give you cocoa and oh, um cocoa blankets and, and stuff and like <laughs> That, that would that be not? nice. <laughs> no, no, it was um, the sort of general philosophy, I suppose, of mm -hmm. the Unseelie Court is um, one of uh, very intense and unhealthy stoicism, I would go so far as to say, mm. uh, were I to have any notes, of which I have many, <laughs> of my family. My mother, the queen of air and darkness. Yes, uh, I've heard of your mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm -hmm. an accurate. <laughs> what have you? What have you heard? And you cannot offend me <laughs> if I'm being quite honest. Well, I, I've I've heard that she is the queen of air and darkness, both in and out. She has and contains no heart or care for anything other than herself. That's what I've heard, but I'm not sure if that's true. And, and obviously, she if she has children, she must care about those. You. You would think. Uh, no, 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 no. She definitely cares about the reputation of her offspring mm -hmm. uh, and her creations. But um, no, it, it, if I may share some personal information. Oh, I would love nothing more. <laughs> Please, like, start <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> she keeps everyone very separate. Because sentiment, where I grew up, is seen as a weakness. Um, which I thought was funny, because I thought, well, that's fear then. You're scared of something, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, that wasn't taken too well. Uh, they called me a very emotional child. Uh, I was often described as hysterical. Because uh, I would laugh sometimes, and my laughter would carry through the caverns. and They... Actually, um, this thing I have in the back of my neck, this elemental shard, was put in such that anytime I am emotional, um, a cloud forms over my head. Uh, she kind of lowers her welding tools. She flips open her mask and says, your mother put something inside of you so you wouldn't feel feelings? Oh, well, I, it's not that I, they realized pretty quickly I couldn't stop the feelings. So it was sort of like a humiliation tactic um, in a way to say like, if you're going to feel them, um, it's going to literally rain on you. And then you'll just be, you know, wet and miserable for a bit. Please pardon me if I am too forward in, in asking this question. Can I see it? Yes, uh, absolutely. And I turn and I move the collar of my robe. What does it look like? Like how, can I tell how it was inserted in them? Yeah, I, I, I suppose it wouldn't take, oh, it wasn't done with any high intense crafting magic. It was kind of a punishment. So yeah. I imagine you'd be able to. So what you see is this like swirling, like black, it's obsidian, but instead of like that snowflake defect inside it, you see somehow darker black that's deeper. Whereas like the shininess of the obsidian reflects mm -hmm. light, these like dark spots catch it and you feel yourself like instinctively moving into it. Mm -hmm. It is driven in the back of his neck as a spike and his skin has grown around it and the very wow. edges of it, no matter how long you've had this, they're still raw, mm -hmm. it's still unhealed but it's there and it's solid. And you can see even as he kind of adjusts himself in the muscular, like the musculature of his like neck and shoulders, everything has shifted to hold this piece, but it is not of him. Well, there was no care in its placement. Hmm. We're new friends and I don't want to do anything that would make you uncomfortable or fearful, but if ever you feel like you want this removed, please know that I can do it. Mm -hmm. And they search for words 
And while they might have like read them, I think the emotional vocabulary isn't quite there yet to mm -hmm. fully respond. And like all those attempts at grasping and holding on to that feeling is almost like grabbing at smoke a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so instead the prince finds one way through which to communicate everything and just turns to you and looks directly at you as I think a little bit of like a cloud forms over, but it's like a very yeah. stable, like coastal storm that just sits on a cliffside for like a couple days. Mm -hmm. It has been the nature of my family to pit siblings against one another for quite a time. Mm. Because there was this idea of scarcity, um, of love in my family. And nothing quite clicked until hearing you talk about magic. The way you see magic is that uh, magic is love. It, a, a plant reaching up for the sun, um, uh, the affinity between people and things. And it occurred to me that the Fae, we treat magic as if there is scarcity to it, mm -hmm. in the same way that we feel that there's a scarcity to love. And it's something to manipulate, move around, like pieces on a game board. Um, that can't be correct. For me, uh, in my court, um, magic is is love, magic is feelings, magic is anger, magic is, you know, is everything. Um, but there are Fae out there who um, do wish to um, withhold or keep, capture, siphon magic and and as such is, you know, why I, that's what happened to everyone. Um, except for I found a loophole, you see. I, I, um, I, I found a way to create sort of like a, um, a, I don't know, a, another term for it other than a washing machine, like a spinning cycle of, um, of movement and magic that can happen between belief in the mortal plane. And, and I, I work with um, three others who believe in me, and together we create magic. And that's, and that's how I am here. Um, the last weaver of fate, uh, the, the one, the, you know, the, the leader, they are a tree now. They are a tree, uh, just a, a beautiful, static tree in the mortal plane, they couldn't get back. And that's what happens. We have to be able to come back and, and go there because we are of here. So, and, and at a loss for words and realizing that they said so many things, uh, she starts um, kind of frantically working back onto the... Um... I'm going to need a performance check to create this outfit. Yes. Ooh. The DC is 20. <gasps> oh. 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 oh, okay, I'm a real lucky. I'm real lucky. Uh. Okay, okay. DC is 20. Mm -hmm. I rolled a... 17, 17 plus seven. 24. <laughs> 24. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, you're able to construct this uh, crown and the sort of uh, dark stalagmite, stalactite, uh, like outfit to match it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you continue talking mm -hmm. and move on. If you have one more thing, I'm gonna bounce away from you in a second. Yeah, is so. it okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, and here it collects all the information, and as you finish that, um, and here it's very gently, they put like one hand on your shoulders to turn you. Yeah. And <gasps> before. <laughs> Sorry, you breaks their hand across <laughs> the shoulder blades. Before I was established as a prince, uh, to go out into the world. I was a squire of sorts. Um, 
the way that my court works. And after being a squire, right before being a prince, I was a knight. Lady Binks, uh, what is the royal term for your court? We don't abide by the like the the formal titles. We're a house, we're a home. Well, in that case, may I? And I look around, and I want to say I grab like a cardboard tube, <laughs> and I hand it to you, mm -hmm. uh, and I kneel. I pledge my oath to your cause, and let's bring this entire fucking thing down. And I. In, in, in remembering courtly things, I, I knight you, and I say, let's. Ooh. <gasps> and you make your way uh, from this and back out and realize that everyone at the masquerade is waiting for you. Ooh. Because as the holder of the crystal heart, no one gets to dance oh, until you open the floor. Where the hell is Whoops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I really Gosh, like her, but... I, I want to dance. I, 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 maybe she's being fashionably late. She oh. is very fashionable. Moth wings are so in. They're so in. <laughs> she she the bathroom door open. <laughs> <laughs> That's where your actual entrance comes from. Yeah. The shitter. <laughs> um, when Binks heads to the floor to start the first dance, where's Aunt Hera? Where is Aunt Hera? I made a pit stop. <gasps> Aunt Hera made a pit stop. Why? To the jewelers? Mm -hmm. To the jewelers. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. To go get your oh. pit stop. Uh, <laughs> we're wearing my glasses, Oscar. I would love some. <laughs> what? What am I? What? <laughs> Can I turn to Antara uh, when, as as Binks is having this interaction with uh, Rue, mm -hmm. <sighs> brother, mm. are you gonna marry Grigobalba for real? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got it. Is it gonna be you? I, I I could if you need me to, but it's not quite in my direct line of. Uh, of Just give me. A, it's got to be a yes or no, my man. Oh, Tell me what case, it is. If that's it, no. I'm okay, sorry. great. And I would like to like. <laughs> With like giving advantage, like trip attack, you stumbling towards Banks, uh, coming out of the bathroom. Amazing. I see what Hobbs is doing. Hobbs is doing, and I will attempt to do the exact same. <laughs> with Binks. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Let's get some like. Uh, honestly, just give me an attack roll, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> what are in Hera and Binks' DCs? Yeah. Uh, my these, these are unarmed strikes, for what it's worth. Eighteen was my AC. Okay. So you know what you gotta beat. An eight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do yes. Yes. <laughs> Did Ru just hit Binks? Ru just took a swing at Binks. <laughs> That's crazy because Binks is wow. Wow, this ball it, uh, this oh, ball is off to a great start. <laughs> oh, I do hope we have some death. <laughs> More swinging. I'm like, oh no, oh there was a th there's an insect. Yes. There's an insect yes, on that, her shoulder. That, that Wafted out, up the skirt, it can be very pleasurable. <laughs> We love a block. The game is afoot. <laughs> oh, I also don't get it done. Yeah. Really? No! Are we fighting? I'm going to punch the dude next this, like, to me. Giant, this like bug bear and owl bear both like take these much smaller fairies that are like, go get them. No overshot! Like, I'm, I'm so uh, sorry. If, if, you, if, if, if you're offended by my <laughs> turning down the by Countess, I, 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 I... No, no, no. I thought I was doing something. I wasn't doing anything. Okay. Please, um, do, do, do. Uh, 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 and the dance is... Hang uh, up the band. Um. We move from that uh, to B. Binks, what do you do in this moment? So in this moment, I feel like um, Binks is not used to the glitz and the glam of, and the opulence of moments like this. And so naturally she um, is kind of drawn to the shadows and to like darker corners. Um, and so I think for a, a large majority of the dance, um, she's just been chatting with you mm -hmm. and just ch talking about everything and then gives and Hera tries to split a, a black apple with them and says, have you tried these yet? They're amazing. No, my dog had one of those the other day. I was so <laughs> Wait, your dog ate? No, the dog just was around them. Oh, uh, try it. And I take a bite of the half apple. Okay. Imbued in this apple are, are memories. They're memories of the mortal realm. You, you feel like you are um, by a fire. 
and there are people laughing and um, telling jokes around you. You feel warm and uh, comforted by this, this group of found family. And it feels like a warm, cozy uh, blanket upon your heart. And, um, and that is a memory. And you see like the, um, the other court of crafts, there's different um, it, uh, shapes and sizes. They all look sort of like they themselves are found objects. And uh, you just, it, you experience it like you're there. My happiness up until this point has been like striking a piece of flint in the darkness. Little bits of spark, which I was very grateful for. This is a fire. Thank you. Would you accompany me uh, to a quick conversation? Sure, I would love to. And I hold out my arm. And I take his arm. <sighs> Leo, what you got? I am going to start a rumor. Yes. Oh, the Prince and Hera Ooh. of the Unseely Court Ooh. has found his match <gasps> in one incredibly regular Binks Chopler. So regular. <gasps> so regular. And the two spent all of the masquerade ball together. And I'm going to, I will start this rumor, but I won't say anything. I'm going to cast suggestion on someone and send them into a luncheon and make them scream it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what the vicar screamed at the top of his lungs? Binks is plain but symmetrical. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be the Cinderella vibe. <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. I do. I finally met another fairy who honestly works, who just like works. Yeah, it's I'm incredible. Like, really? It's amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. I, know. I was thinking that I about have you. so much respect for what? what you do. Oh my God. <laughs> and the Prince Antera's suit? My goodness. Oh, I don't know what. Like, I don't, we're just like <laughs> cool and stuff, but. What are you like, saying? You, I don't know. <laughs> you did what? make the suit, right? I did. Oh my God. I don't know what Wait, I was doing. Wait, what were you reacting to? No, Anything. No, I know. I was just. Hey, listen. I should know about falling in love at the Bloom last night. <laughs> so, yeah. What did you say? I sh uh, you said that. Well, I didn't say falling you in love. Said, you I didn't did say about falling in love. I, what Who'd I you say fall in love with? Was an era. <laughs> an era. An era. An era. I didn't even know you were in love. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Wait. But you are the leader of the Court of Craft, and <laughs> I believe that the young. You are. I, Listen, I, I, nauseous I mean, or not, you are the leader know, of the Court I just, of Craft. I know. I was. Just, I, 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 this is the first leadership position I've ever really held. A conversation between you and I think our young friend, the prince, maybe were. Listen. I'm I just thinking, you're like, why would he? There's like, you know, like, I. There's no reason for him to like me. Like, you know what I mean? So like, it doesn't matter. I mean, sorry, sorry, I'm projecting, continue. Miss Chopley. You just call me Binks. Unless you want to call me Miss Chopley, it's, it's, it's really up to you. It's, I, I, I don't really need formalities. I, Binks. Yeah. Binks. Binks. There are things so precious that even in an immortal life, their coming must be seen as the rarest of all possible gifts. <laughs> I, I told somebody else that recently. Many of us see our chance at happiness. Mm -hmm. And no matter the length of our reach, know that it is beyond our grasp. If you have the station that you have and the prince sees something in you, all I can say is this, in love and war, you must not miss your moment to strike. I Cut here really quickly. <coughs> you said that Rue would have immediately returned to look for Binks. Yeah. Uh, you go to where you know uh, they are staying in that like forgotten place under the radiator. They are not there. 
what do you do next? What would I do next? Um, I take a moment and then I think to myself with a smile on my face, I wonder if Binks is with Anhera. And I head over <laughs> to his court. That's so interesting. I was looking for both of you um, mm -hmm. at the gala recently to gift something to the both of you oh. in particular. But oh. before I do that and present that, oh, <laughs> might I just say, this is not the Unseelie's plan. This is strictly my sister's. And it seems that we're all being divided up in the opposite way that the magic is being gathered and controlled. But the goal is the same. So at this moment, as the, not just heir to the Unseely throne, but someone who actually deeply, really considers my position seriously, mm -hmm. I would like to extend an invitation for all of you to join my court. In whatever position you seek, not through marriage or familial relation, but mm -hmm. it is my right to do so. And I think truly we are stronger together. Mm -hmm. Whatever resources I have at my disposal, they are now yours. As and I'm sorry, Lord Erebus, are you crying? <laughs> it's very sweet. <laughs> and Hera, I need you to make, essentially make a spell attack for okay. me. Yeah. So roll plus your charisma and proficiency. Great. That is going to be a 12. It's okay. It's extremely low DC. As you all feel this little pulse move through the room and it touches each of you very lightly at the foot as the like gravity of the words and the strength with which he speaks on behalf of his court meets you, that an agreement to this is something true and binding. There's a lot of lip service that passes between Fae, mm. but he is speaking a deep and like changing truth to all of you. The way my magic works is when you're close to me, um, you can't get poisoned, uh, charmed. Um, you have strength against specific tests. And I don't think that's a mistake. I think that magic is an extension of the love that we have for ourselves, each other, and um, the world around us. And the idea of someone hoarding that and cutting that off from different realms, that offends me on a very deep level. And I speak as the Prince of the Antilli Court. Welcome, in whatever capacity you'd like. And as much as I would love to accept, um, I am the last of my court. And being so, my court would die with me. Mm -hmm. um, I will decline, but in turn would, of course, offer the same as well. If anyone would want to join the court of craft here now, if you find, even you, that the machinations of your own court become too much and you want a warm fire and you want to be swept away in stories and visit the mortal realm as much as you want, I would be so honored to have any of you. Same. Give me a spell attack roll. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> 11. 11. It's okay. Again, this is a very low DC. Yeah. Uh, the same thing, but this one doesn't feel like a pulse or an aura. This is more the feeling of remembering something as you smell something that triggers a memory. None of you smell anything in particular, but you get that sudden like connection between a thing you've forgotten and a thing you're currently experiencing. And that is like the pulse of her magic mm. as in the same way a true offer is being presented to you. Mm. We're gonna give them a little bit of privacy, right? Because yes. I have to, I have a thing. You have your thing, and I, I have to make sure that the thing doesn't get out of hand. Yes, it's because it's, it's so <laughs> it's wild, wild and messy. And we're messy. Oh, God, <laughs> so let's just run. Wild. Grab your uh, hand and run. Yeah. <laughs> and move to Aunt Hera and Binks. Um, I think when I grabbed Aunt Hera's hand, before, the first time I grabbed your hand, it was f innocent friendship, right? And I, I had that impulse to grab your hand again, and I do, and we run, and I, we're trying to. I'm trying to stay by the sh the shoreline because I'm subtly waiting for because I'm seeing the the waves yes. and all of that ripple. Um, but I drop your hand, and am suddenly a little self conscious. Ooh, what a what a wild evening. Yeah, are, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. And it's not it's fine. Are you okay? How are you? Me? Yeah, how, how, are, how are you doing? 
<laughs> uh, and I kind of glance at like I'm wearing like a suit that is uh, like cave dark granite mm. uh, with veins of gold that mm. kind of oh. cross through. Oh. And my double bladed scimitar is in halves and it looks like bat wings on my back. Oh, and I kind of just like look up. Good. It's <laughs> good. Uh, Binks is wearing it's like a capelet that has mm. like like kind of bigger shoulders. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and her um, branch marks uh, that are golden are kind of, they're very pronounced. Like, I don't think that she's ever shown them bef before, oh but God. they're just like veins of like gold on her. Mm. Okay. Hi! Uh, okay. Okay. I have my branch marks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as you asked that question, I, I'm, I'm fine. And I um, kind of collect some thoughts and I put like a hand like innocently like on your shoulder just to like kind of like lean in to like speak with you. Um, Earlier today, when you um, offered everyone a position in your court, yeah, um, considering that you're the last of, you know, uh, essentially of, of your kind in a way, um, I want to let you know I accept, but I think perhaps not in retaliation or betrayal of my own court. I don't see why we can only have one allegiance. Allegiance is the right thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, I, I would like to, I, I think we could. I would very much. Do you kind of get what I'm? Yes, uh, bit... yeah, yeah, no, I know what you're, you're saying. Hold um, on. Do you mean that? Yeah. Give me a charisma saving throw. Oh, let me do with the other die. Okay, that is going to be a 17. You feel something inside you get pulled extremely taut as you accept that offer without casting away your extant allegiance and alliance. And it feels like there's not room for both, but you push to hold both simultaneously. And you feel the like bits of arcane between your cells are beginning to shake and something feels very unstable within you. But for now, you hold, and we'll decide what that means in a bit, but continue. Um, my court is unlike most of the courts. I, uh, we don't uh, do the, the formalities, the, the structure, the secrets, the subterfuge. We just, we say what we mean, and we, we mean what we say, and, and I'm so happy to accept you into my court. I do have a request of you. Yes, of course. In my court, we do not exert control in the way that other courts do. And in that, I would like it if, and if you're okay with me removing your shard, <laughs> as that <laughs> dampens the fullness of who you are, that shard is in direct opposition to my court. Two surgeries, one episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Spoons out. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> As you make that offer, a small bloom springs into being, and a blood red trumpet flower faces you. And you hear like muffled sounds of speech, but it's a foot and a half off the ground. So you can't quite make it out. Uh, what, what, one moment, please. Uh, of course, yeah. I'm going to kind of lay down and kind of look at it. As you lay down yeah. and like make contact with it, it seems to open up a little bit more yeah. towards you. Hello. And you see just a little puff of like red pollen gets exhaled out. And then you should make a constitution saving throw. Ooh. Poison flower. Oh God. <laughs> flower not nice. I thought it was maybe a friend flower. I thought it was a friend flower too. And a constitution saving throw. Um, or trying to get you high. That's a four, baby. Oh. I'm gonna get high AF. <laughs> you take 19 points of poison damage. Oh. <laughs> and your aura prevents other people from taking the poison condition, correct? Yes. You feel something enter into your lungs and try to grab hold. The damage persists, but the poison condition does not. And now I need you to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. Oh. 
as vines shoot up from the ground. You see this happening, and you're already laying down as they attempt to wrap and grapple you. Plus two Dex because... Dexterity saving throw? Yeah. Oh, God, baby, that is a 15 plus eight. Woo! Yes. Rogue shit. We're good, we're good. good. <laughs> you feel these like vines wrap around you. You describe to me how you're able to evade so them. So I see the vines start to move, and um, I, I roll, and I like spring up. So it's like, it's very like martial art where like I spin my legs and then yeah. I'm up Hell yeah. and I am like, look out. And as you make eye contact, you see other vines beginning to spring up, shooting very specifically for Banks. So we pick back up as a low rumble moves through the ground. And the first thing I'm going to need is a constitution saving throw from Antara. No. <laughs> Oh, worry not, my friend. That's a nine. Oh! <laughs> Stop with these opposites. You're supposed to do the opposite when you pass. Yes. When you fail. I was going to say, he's strong. He's built like a pillar. Can't take him down. You're standing sort of looking at Binks as these uh, strange vines are coming up to try to wrap her up and bind her. And you feel that vibration between yourselves as uh, the magic in you that's trying to hold these two ideas together and coherent overwhelms you. And you push all of that energy down and out and away from you into the ground, into the bloom and the realm of fairy itself. And you are a being from the dark who occasionally has Storm clouds over you, mm -hmm. but now it's not just over you as the sky that was full of stars and clear and bright and cool rolls over with dark, inky purple clouds and the storm rolls in and the rumble under your feet gets worse and worse until the ground itself here in this place between places begins to crack and split apart with the energy of whatever is being wrought into the world. All right, my other two. How's it going? You're just hanging out. No. You're able to like dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge these plants. Is um, I'd like to see if I can find a caster, like where they're coming from, like who is controlling these plants. Give me an arcana check. Okay. Oh god. Oh, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Mm. Oh, I should have counted. <laughs> um, that is a eleven. You can always burn a token to succeed. Um, uh, what is this boy? Um, Who could say? <laughs> Who could say? Um, yeah, I feel like my life is in danger and mm -hmm. your life is in danger in Hera. So I take a quick scan of everything and I burn the token. Amazing. Good, yes, good, burn them all. You, again, reach towards something powerfully arcane within yourself, mm -hmm. and you feel and you look at these plants. There is no caster. Okay. The plants themselves are deeply magical, and you reach towards that sense that you have uh, lost places and hidden things, and you're able to sort of see and follow the roots deep and powerful and strong under the ground, shooting off in a direction. You actually see where all of these other plants were popping up in and around this area in the theater. They're all leading in one direction mm -hmm. towards something very powerfully arcane that you can kind of see with your arcane vision off back behind the theater stage itself. And you know that that's the direction of Lord Erebus and that your friends are probably headed in. But it all originates there. Um, we, we have to go back to the theater. It's, it's not safe here, and I'm dodging vines. Um, have I overcome my distraction? Yes, because you've pushed it into the earth, and this earthquake, and as things are sort of shifting and moving, you're not sure if it's entirely because of you, but something about that energy sparked. It was that last little catalyst of strange, chaotic magic that's been pushed into the world that is causing all of this change. Um, I look to you and I grab both ends of my double-wood scimitar and I click them together and lock them so my weapon is prepared. Are you feeling okay? I, it's hard for me to breathe. I, without even hearing any more, I put a hand on his shoulder and I cast uh, Protection from Poison. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can happen to you. And I, um, at that, um, 
I take out my crossbow. I've ne never brandished a weapon before, and it is in the shape of sort of like a wishbone. And I load it, and I say, nothing can happen to you. I whip some water off of the blades, um, and I look up to the storming sky above, and I imagine my elemental shard is glowing. Um, but I don't know if that would even show up in this torrent. Oh, in this storm specifically, yes, it does. Interesting. Mm. And every time a flash of lightning streaks across the sky, uh, as almost as if it's reflected in your shard, your shard lights up too. I have a feeling I know where the storm's coming from. Before we go, you said that you could remove this from me. Yes, I, I can move, remove it, and it would be my, my pleasure to, to do so. Could you now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Binks, you're up. Well, you asked me to remove the shard, and that's what I want to do. So in a kind of a flourish, very similar to what it is like in my workshop, I kind of spin you, and I kind of put you to your knees. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and okay. um, I look at the shard and kind of inspect it, and um, I want to try to remove it with Arcana. Okay. Go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Arcana check. Oh, that is a dirty 20. <gasps> Amazing. Mm. You see, even as you like move in place and you touch it, you feel it tethered both above to this world and you can feel off and far away the like seat of the unseelie court where like this energy is sourced from. And you feel just a little bit of a connection out and away in the direction of the roots to Suntar, the one who actually, if not the person that installed the spike, has a, enough wherewithal to be in control of it. In that, that moment, I could see her, and it's almost like our, through the, the vines of um, how the magic works, it's almost like I can like touch her almost, yeah. right? And I, I whisper under my breath, and it, I, it's unclear whether or not she can hear me, but if she can't hear me, she can feel this. Mm -hmm. You will not control him. And as you pull it free, those of you that are near Centaur hear her just yelling up into the sky. He was mine to control. <laughs> and it's pulled free and away, and you feel something about your magic, the full force of what being a prince of a court means, was wrapped around that spike and bound and buried, and it is untethered and unloosed, and you feel your awareness, your magical capabilities spreading out to all dark places and all lost places as someone who is a member of two courts that have more in common than they think. And you can reach up. The storm is yours. What do you do? Thank you. I saw her, your sister. She did this to you. And I hold out my hand, and I want to say that the rain doesn't fall when I reach out. Mm. And I grab. We're okay. going. And you head off in the direction. Uh, that was your action. Mm -hmm. You, via holding this spike, are tethered to a person that is next to the portal. Mm. You still have a bonus action if you would like to attempt a success. Okay. Um, and feeling close to the portal and understanding that the weight of it, everything I've fought for, everything I've worked for, I, I think about the, um, the feeling it felt to finally be seen and to reveal my, myself and, and to understand what my court means. And I burn the heart. Oh. oh. No roll required. Oh. The crystal heart is a different artifact. Oh. oh. Mm. And even as you feel it disintegrate, wherever it physically was on your person, you hear a sigh of relief and alarm and surprise as the members of your court stuck and transformed as they are, can reach out and they know that their leader is reaching for them. And you are filled with a surge of hope and purpose. And we move from Binks mm -hmm. to Rue. Are up Pantera as you move and see the scene. Um, I see my sister and Wavi 
Wavy uh, was able to fully tackle her and do enough damage to break the concentration, but she seems loath to truly hurt someone of a significantly higher station than herself. Makes sense. Dear sister, I cast Compel Duel. <gasps> oh, what? Oh my god. And Ooh. I establish the duel by throwing the elemental shard that has been so kindly extracted from my body into the ground as it goes chunk at an angle and sticks right there. Okay. Uh, what's the DC? Uh, it's going to be 14. <sighs> yeah. It doesn't get it with the 12. <laughs> and she like looks up at Wavi like, if you don't mind. <laughs> and Wavi looks over at you. And Centaur like pulls herself through the like moss and mud, gets to her feet. And uh, she's looking you dead in the eye. Mm -hmm. And you just see her hand twitch as she uses like a mage hand to grab the spike. She's holding her hands as though she's holding the spike, but the spike is floating like seven feet out in front of her. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this? Yes. <laughs> okay, little brother. Go ahead. Please, actually, you first. Then, while using Mage Hand to hold the spike, she reaches up with her other hand, is going to pull down a bolt of lightning from the sky. Please make a dexterity saving throw. Great. Well, oh, 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 oh. Does someone oh, want to intervene and stop her from casting a spell? I look over at my cousin, should we do something? I mean, I could fully stop this, but also, I mean, the drama. I'm gonna lean in and be like, let him tank it. He'll take it. He's gonna, gonna look amazing. He's going no, it's all gonna... yours. It's Go all get him, king, a prince. That was a wonderful eleven. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you take forty-four <laughs> points of lightning. You got damage. this, king. <laughs> <laughs> she reaches up with that bolt and pulls something darker than the night sky down onto you mm -hmm. for forty-four points of lightning damage, and just smiles. I spit out what would, I suppose, uh, in the uh, material realm be like blood. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's kind of like a dark cave river mm -hmm. liquid. Um, it's just darkness itself. And I spit it and I start to laugh at her. Are oh, you just gonna laugh? Well, that's actually not um, <laughs> the exact extent my communications to you, dear sister. You see, I spoke with mother earlier. I don't care about our mother. Really? No. Fascinating. Of course, of course you don't, <laughs> because you've hatched this incredible plan, and it's been incredibly successful except for the utter fucking failure it's been this entire time. And I point to the elemental shard. Was that your attempt at control over me? It was pretty effective until very recently. Binx has her crossbow like on you, like just ready. If ever Anhira gives me a nod, we'll shoot you. You are now actively acting against the Unseelie Court. Your alliances that you've made are um, eviscerated for the most part after getting a very easy distraction. Very effective. I just do what I do. <laughs> Put the corpse down now. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't. I, we, we, we might not be out of the woods just yet. <laughs> you become a pillar boy oh, yourself. No. <laughs> Your plan and plot against the other courts has been completely exposed. Uh, so much so that you actually ended up uniting the rest of us against you. You have no allyship but yourself. You're standing in complete loneliness, and all you have is your broken and disproven pride, whereas everyone has found a way to connect. And Rue, that full credit goes to you. You did it. This was a successful bloom. So? I will accept your resignation in this duel, and we can call it even. Or we can continue to fight and you might kill me. Genuinely, you might, with the next strike. And then all of these folks will kill you. I am smart enough to know when a fight's a bad one. 
but we are incredibly long lived. And I will see you again. And she takes one step back and is going to dimension door. Counter spell. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey, did you just try to make a graceful exit? <laughs> and it just got stopped? Uh, back into a wall. Honey, you're gonna walk away. You're gonna walk. Yeah. Wait, yeah. if you counterspell the dimension door, is she a little bit off balance? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> cool, you do that, and I'm gonna go, hmm, and kick her through the portal. <laughs> <laughs> I have an action surge I never used. Yeah, That's very good. She goes, huh, no! <laughs> Streets. Yes, yeah. the sewage running streets of gritty Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I have to find Jeremy. <laughs> and finally, we move to Antara and Binks. Antara, do you make your way over to Binks at any point? Uh, at any point, I think it's immediate. Okay. <laughs> That's not me, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so Binks, you would find them by the portal still, and they're just like, Staring into it in in sort of like wonder. Uh, my dear Binks. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. If you were um, scrying or no, uh, I I hear them. I'm sorry. I I hear them. My court. They they reached out. They're not gone. That's that's fantastic. Oh, so I suppose you don't have to um, uh, open your court anymore. I suppose uh, you no, found... no, no, no. I my court again. It, we keep calling it a court, and and courts have so much formality and, and rules. My my court is no court; it is a home, and you are welcome in my home, always. And staring into the portal. I'm not a leader. <laughs> I've never been a leader ever uh, in my entire existence. And, and it's, it's entirely scary. It's so scary. But I, I am so grateful to everything you've done. And I am, I feel ready. I feel like excited, scared, and I'm going to use my last, um, this is tied to the mortal realm. Yes. And in it, I, I reach my mind out to everyone, to Rue, to uh, Captain Hobb, to Lord Erevis, to Lady Sharp. And I say, my home is always, always, forever open to you. Should you need a place to rest your head, a place to find comfort, laughter, my home is yours. And I would love for you to see it. Come with me to the mortal realm. I would absolutely love that. That sounds incredible. And, um, I'm sorry that it's scary. <laughs> it's terrifying. Like, oh my god. I, yeah, I, like, I, what? I, I wasn't in line or anything. It's just that I survived. No, 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 no. Uh, no. Uh, uh, and I, I want to like grab you by the shoulders like a little bit. And not like for like just yeah. like, very tenderly. You didn't just survive. You, you already led something. You led the revolution that changed everything. And uh, quite a bit has happened, <laughs> but just as a reminder, and I want to take a knee, I have pledged fealty to you. And I would like to burn my last token that I earned from KP Hobbs. And for the rest of our existence, anytime you are scared, I'll reassure you. I, I take sort of your hand, so I'm standing, you're kneeling. I'll kneel to meet your gaze. And I will kiss you. Oh! <laughs> and the kiss is received and returned immediately. Oh. And above both of us, a late spring cloud forms oh. and starts to rain. Do you go through the portal? Uh, yeah, and I will stand. Um, 
Oh, still holding your hand. I'll say, we have so much to experience together. Mm -hmm. And I walk through the portal. As do I. And you disappear forward and through to experience something new and different, but you leave something new and different behind. You all do. And each of you feels a little, a little brown string ties itself in a bow around uh, your pinky finger as a little, <laughs> as a little tether to the home that is the Court of Craft is created an offer extant and persisting. Because the things that you guys have done here, you don't need to be a part. The Lords of the Wing never needed to be a part of a court. You two have renounced your courts and found each other. And that's all you need is interconnectedness, but it never needed to be this system. And you two moving forward and through, creating something together and something new. The world, this world, and the one you saved is different now because you, Archfey, dared to reach for each other and you reached back. And I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here and a part of this yeah. very strange, very yeah. lovely story. Yeah. I love you all so, so much. <laughs>